everyone. It's Michelle and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. So I have a book recommendation for you guys today. This one is called The Secrets of Heartwood Hall. It's a little bit of a gothic chilling ghost story that takes place in a haunted house back in 1852 in England. So if you're interested in that kind of Victorian era, a little bit of a gothic ghost story, this would definitely be up your alley. Now the story is about a young widow who takes a position as a governess to an only child at a very isolated and some say cursed country house. So as soon as she gets there, of course, weird things start happening, strange noises. The servants are very cold. There's a lot of tension. And of course, there's the abandoned east wing of the house. It's a really good book. It's a very fast listen. So if you are interested, I will leave it for you in my Amazon storefront. And I will be adding some more replicate outfits and other good items to my Amazon storefront. So if you're interested, guys, I will have it linked for you in the description below. But you guys, we have a lot of juicy royalty to get through today. So you know what to do. Sit back and relax. Grab yourself a beverage. And let's get into the Royal Daily Tea. So it looks like there's another set of commemorative coins that are being released of King Charles just in time for his coronation. The first crowned portrait of King Charles to feature on commemorative 50 pence and 5 pound coins are going to be released on April 24th. They even have one that's one kilogram solid gold coin set to go on sale for 77,000 pounds. Now the 50 pence coins will be available from 9 a.m. on April 24th and they will sell between 11 pounds and 1,200 pounds. Now the effigy, which was designed by an artist and sculptor by the name of Martin Jennings, is emblazoned on a highly collective coin that depicts King Charles III wearing the Tudor crown. Now even though the Tudor crown no longer exists and it was destroyed in 1640, King Charles himself personally selected the crown. This continues in the tradition of the crown being used in portraits of previous kings from the 20th century, including that of his late great-grandfather, King George VI. The 50 pence coin will also feature a drawing of Westminster Abbey by the Royal Mint's designer, Natasha Jenkins. The image also includes King Charles's cipher and crown to symbolize him being inside the abbey where he is to be crowned. Now the five pound coin is going to feature a design by Timothy Node of the sacred and symbolic objects used in the coronation ceremony known as the coronation regalia and the St. Edward's crown. Now they said there's going to be over 5 million 50 pence pieces that are set to enter circulation later in 2023 featuring the original uncrowned effigy of King Charles and the commemorative Westminster Abbey drawing by Miss Jenkins. This follows the 5 million memorial 50 pence pieces that entered circulation after the king ascended the throne. So I don't know about you, but this is really exciting. I'm looking forward to getting myself some commemorative coins to celebrate this historic moment. Do you plan to buy some of these commemorative coins? We have some more fun coronation news. King Charles releases a brand new emoji just in time for his coronation. If you remember, they released one for Her Majesty's Platinum Jubilee, an adorable corgi by the name of PJ. Now this one is of the King Edward crown, which he's going to wear during his coronation. Now this is the first emoji created for a British coronation. The palace said the emoji will become available on April 10th when the hashtags coronation, coronation concert, 
coronation weekend and coronation big lunch are used. I'm very excited for this. This is an adorable emoji. I for one love to use them. So let me know if you plan to use this in your social media postings. Well, now that we have official confirmation that Prince Harry will be in attendance for King Charles's coronation, Palisades are working overtime on a seating arrangement. They definitely want to keep Harry separated from the rest of the royal family, especially Prince William. They want to avoid any awkward run-ins or any embarrassing photo opportunities where Prince Harry can throw some shade or some side eye at Big Bro Willie or get awkward photo opportunities or the money shot for Netflix. In my opinion, they're probably going to throw him over to the tier two royals, much like they did for Her Majesty's Platinum Jubilee. Maybe Johnny will sit behind him once again and keep an eye on the rogue royal. Now, a lot of people would prefer to see him sitting in Siberia, but unfortunately, they are stuck with him. Maybe there'll be one or two candlesticks to block his view. I really think the cameras are not going to focus much on Prince Harry. They're going to do like they did for the Queen's funeral, where every time the camera lands on him, it's going to quickly move aside. The main focus is going to be probably on King Charles and Camilla, and then the working royals. But it will be interesting to watch some of the body language between the royals and Prince Harry. But we do know for sure it's going to be a little frosty over there in Westminster Abbey. So it looks like Meghan Markle's supporters are out there in full swing. Dr. Shouty Shola has suggested that Meghan's decision not to go to the King's coronation is admirable and inspiring. She says the Duchess has bad in-laws and has self-worth to say no to the most powerful family in the world. Yeah, I don't think that Meghan Markle not going to King Charles's coronation is, quote, inspirational. If anything, it makes her look like a coward. We all know that Meghan Markle has been delighting herself with throwing insults and slurs at the royal family and playing the professional victim for three years. We saw the way she looked like a deer in the headlights when she had to face Catherine and William for that awkward walkabout during Her Majesty's funeral. You could tell by her body language she was like, oh crap, I gotta face the music, right? She was talking some major crap about the royals and they just weren't having it. So there's absolutely no way she was going to go down and face them once again, especially since the docu-series has aired and Harry's book, Spare. No way in hell was she going to show up and face the music. We all know that's what a narcissist does, is they cause a lot of drama, and then they send their flying monkey, which is Harry, to finish and face the dirty work. She's not going to go there and face it. So this excuse about Meghan Markle staying home with Archie and Lilibet because it's his birthday, that's a load of crap. So let me get this straight. It's better for Archie to have cake and ice cream and a little backyard barbecue or maybe a party at Chuck E. Cheese than it is for Meghan and her children to go to the U.K., to celebrate their grandfather becoming king in a historical moment that hasn't happened in over 70 years, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. But now we're going to stay home and have cake and ice cream and go to Chuck E. Cheese because I'm a good mom and I have bad in-laws and I have self-worth. It's more important for me to choose peace and to stay home in obscurity with my children because we all know that Meghan Markle, she's so maternal. She's afraid of getting booze. She's afraid of the backlash, knowing that her popularity in the UK has 
plummeted and all of the crap and the lies that she has slung at the royal family is coming to bite her in the royal arse. She's a coward. So there's nothing inspirational about a woman who has caused complete chaos. The breakdown of family relationships is a known and proven liar and then cowards out and bows out of attending a huge event, robbing their children of a lifetime moment to possibly connect with family, all because she doesn't want to face the music. So instead, she's going to bow out and use the children as an excuse. But I think all of us really see her for what she is, a lying narcissist. So this whole thing about Shouty Shola saying that Megan, by her refusing to go to the coronation, is, quote, drawing a line in the sand with Harry's family because they're evil and they're racist and she's choosing happiness and peace. This is from the woman who has caused all of the problems. You ever meet someone like that? They cause chaos and then they kind of back out like, oh, am I the drama? Is it me? Like that song, am I the drama? Is it me? I don't think so. Hmm, maybe I'm the drama. Yes, hun, you are the drama. It's interesting how Harry didn't have all these issues before Meghan came along and told him he has these issues. Now, let, I'm going to be fair. We all know that Harry, being the spoiled spare, is to blame for a lot of it as well. It's not all Meghan's fault, but I think the two of them together are definitely not bringing out the best in one another. They're like two peas in a pod. Unfortunately for the royal family, Harry chose wrong. He chose the wrong spouse. So now they have this walking, talking disaster of a sister and daughter-in-law from hell. So I'm sure every single person in the royal family is breathing a sigh of relief that Megzi Markle has decided not to come to the coronation. But I do find it interesting how the sugars are doing a big spin and claiming that Meghan Markle's a good mommy and she has her priorities straight. And by Meghan Markle not attending and turning down the coronation is making her a superhero. Well, I beg to differ on that for sure. So is Meghan Markle's time with the royal family 100% over? And is there absolutely no way back for Meghan Markle? Has Meghan Markle reached the point of no return for the royal family? Now we know that her husband, Prince Howie, is returning alone on May 6th for his father's coronation. And it is rumored that King Charles really wanted to have a photograph with him and his two sons. So he's definitely happy to have his son there, although they have a very strained relationship. And I can tell you for one, there's a lot of people sighing major sighs of relief that the witch... I mean, Meghan Markle will not be in attendance, that they're going to get Harry to themselves, although he is on the outs with quite a few members of the royal family. But at the end of the day, blood is thicker than water, and they would prefer him over her. But my question is, this has got to be one of the last large state events that Meghan Markle could attend or could have attended. Because what is the next event? Christmas? Is she going to show up and be like, hey, y'all, Merry Christmas. Let's deck the halls together. Meghan Markle has not spent any holidays with the royal family since 2018. The last time she appeared in the UK for a family and state event was for Her Majesty's funeral in September of 2022 and the previous year for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. 
But without Her Majesty the Queen, Meghan Markle really doesn't have many fans or allies left in the royal family. And by her bowing out of one of the biggest events in the royal family, especially for her father-in-law, King Charles, the man who walked her down the aisle, the man who welcomed her into his family, she's pretty much saying, F you, Daddy Charles, I don't care about you. It's about me. To me, this is a royal snub, and it really means that their relationship is fractured. Because if she had any kind of feeling or relationship toward King Charles, she would go. This is not a birthday party or a Christmas. This is a royal coronation, a once in a lifetime opportunity that hasn't happened in 70 years. And she's like, nah, I can't make it. It's Archie's birthday. Sorry. Sorry, pops. Maybe I'll catch you at Christmas or Thanksgiving. All right. But I got more important things to do here in Montecito. What? No. So in my opinion, this is the beginning of the end of Meghan Markle's role and relationship with the royal family because after this, what do they really need her for? What event would she possibly come over for besides the possible funeral of King Charles in the future? That's if she's still married to Harry at that point, which is debatable. In my opinion, she's going to be the future. Sarah Ferguson 2.0 or Wallace Simpson. I guess you can take your pick. We have Prince Harry, who is a blood royal. He's a born royal. He's a member of the royal family. So he will always be a part of the royal family, even if it's strained, even if he's living in exile, like the Duke of Windsor. He's still a royal. He'll still have a string tie to them. And they would take him back over Megan any day of the week, especially if they divorced. You know, Daddy Charles would come back and get Prince Harry and drag him back to the UK and set his ass straight. We all know they would have an intervention, get him some counseling, get him off of his little substances and his magic mushrooms and get him some real help. If he really left Meghan Markle and said, Daddy, I need help, they would take him back because, after all, he is family. Meghan Markle is family through marriage only. Now, the grandchildren, Archie and Lily, yes, for sure, they would definitely step in and help them. But Meghan Markle, they could take her or leave her. She's really not important to the family. I hate to say it, but let's be honest here. She's been the daughter-in-law and sister-in-law from hell. Nobody's missing her. All right, Megan, no one's missing you. They're all breathing a sigh of relief that you're not going to be there and make a very tense and important situation more awkward than it already is going to be with Prince Harry. But at the end of the day, Prince Harry, he's blood, he's family. King Charles is happy to have his son there, although it's definitely going to be awkward. But Meghan Markle, in my opinion, this really speaks volumes that, girlfriend, you're on the way out. There's really no role or place for you. If you can't go to the coronation because it's your son's fourth birthday party, like you couldn't have thrown him a little backyard barbecue birthday at Frogmore at a friend's house the way you did for Lilibet the year before at the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. I mean, come on. Is anyone buying this load of crap that they're trying to sell you? What this message is really saying is we're done here. The royal family has wiped their hands of Meghan Markle, and she's pretty much agreeing, we're done. There's no relationship between Meghan Markle and the royal family, but Harry, Harry is showing up. And that, to me, is telling me a couple of things. One, 
Harry and Meghan know they still have to have a shoestring to the royal family. So Meghan, she's not pretending anymore. She's like, nah, you do it, Harry. I'm over it. It's your family. You deal with it. So Harry is going over there to be seen with the royals to play the part of the dutiful son, even though he's the victim and he's just the spare that no one loves. They love William more than him and he's just the victim, but he's going to show up and put on his Sunday best and appear with daddy on TV for the coronation because his brand and his livelihood depend on it. But Megan is not going to help him. She's going to throw the rocks and the stones and let Harry get the brunt of it. You know what I mean? Like I said before, she's not loyal. She's not a ride or die chick. She's making Harry face the music all by himself. Okay? But best believe she's planning something in Montecito. Her book, some more pap picks. Rumors of a second season of her podcast. I don't know if that's true, but that's a rumor. Of course, the reinvention of the Teague, all while using the Duchess of Sussex title. Again, she's going to be Sarah Ferguson 2.0, monetizing on her connection to the royal family and her title, while not really being an essential part of the royal family. Word has come out that Fergie's not even invited to the coronation because she's the ex-wife of Prince Andrew, the disgraced brother who's being hidden behind the candlestick with Harry at the coronation. But let's be honest here, Fergie really doesn't have a huge connection to the royal family besides the fact that she's the ex-wife of Andrew and the mother of Princess Eugenie and Beatrice, much like Meghan Markle, who's now the wife, the current wife of Prince Harry. She could be the ex-wife one day. And she's a mother of Prince and Princess Lillian Archie. So in my opinion, in 10 years, Megan, look to your right. Look to Aunt Fergie because that's your future. Obscurity, outcast, not in the royal circle, but still monetizing on titles. And Harry, if you don't watch it, you're going to be the Duke of Windsor or Uncle Andy. That's like your future. I hate to tell y'all, but that's where you guys are headed, right? So in my opinion, this really speaks volumes that there's absolutely no love lost between Meghan and the royals. And there's no more pretending. It's over, folks. She's not going. They don't care. And really, where is she ever going to go to a state event unless it's King Charles's, you know, funeral? She's certainly not going to go to William's coronation. I think it's done. She's done with the royals. They're done with her. The era of Meghan Markle being a part of the royal fold, it's kaput. But Prince Harry, he's still holding on by his shoestring because he knows when his marriage hits the crapper and the iceberg hits the Titanic, he's going to need a lifeline to daddy. So he's keeping that shoe strain a dangling, making sure he still has a little bit of a pull with the royals. But what do you guys think? Do you think Meghan Markle is 100% out with the royal family and a point of no return? Leave me your comments, guys, down below. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. I will have episode four of Karina and the King this weekend. But you guys, thank you for stopping by the channel and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye guys.